Quoting out of context. Quoting out of context, sometimes referred to as contextomy or quote mining, is an informal fallacy in which a passage is removed from its surrounding matter in such a way as to distort its intended meaning. Contextomies may be either intentional or accidental if someone misunderstands the meaning and omits something essential to clarifying it, thinking it to be non-essential. As a fallacy, quoting out of context differs from false attribution, in that the out of context quote is still attributed to the correct source. Arguments based on this fallacy typically take two forms. Contextomy. Contextomy refers to the selective excerpting of words from their original linguistic context in a way that distorts the source's intended meaning, a practice commonly referred to as quoting out of context. The problem here is not the removal of a quote from its original context per se, as all quotes are, but to the quoter's decision to exclude from the excerpt certain nearby phrases or sentences, which become context by virtue of the exclusion, that serve to clarify the intentions behind the selected words. Dot comparing this practice to surgical excision, journalist Milton Meyer coined the term contextomy to describe its use by Julius Streicher, editor of the infamous Nazi broadsheet Der Stürmer in Weimar era Germany. To arouse anti-Semitic sentiments among the weekly's working-class Christian readership, Stryker regularly published truncated quotations from Talmudic texts that, in their shortened form, appear to advocate greed, slavery, and ritualistic murder. Although rarely employed to this malicious extreme, contextomy is a common method of misrepresentation in contemporary mass media and studies have demonstrated that the effects of this misrepresentation can linger even after the audience is exposed to the original, in context, quote. In advertising. One of the most familiar examples of context to me is the ubiquitous review blurb in advertising. The lure of media exposure associated with being blurbed by a major studio may encourage some critics to write positive reviews of mediocre movies. Dot however, even when a review is negative overall, studios have few reservations about excerpting it in a way that misrepresents the critic's opinion. For example, the ad copy for New Line Cinema's 1995 thriller Say 7N attributed to Owen Gleberman, a critic for Entertainment Weekly, used the comment a small masterpiece. Gleberman actually gave Say 7N a B- overall and only praised the opening credits so grandiosely, the credit sequence, with its jumpy frames and near subliminal flashes of psychoparaphernalia, is a small masterpiece of dementia. Similarly, United Artists contextomized critic Kenneth Turan's review of their flop hoodlum, including just one word from it, irresistible in the film's ad copy. Even Lawrence Fishburne's incendiary performance can't ignite hoodlum, a would be gangster epic that generates less heat than a nickel cigar. Fishburne's bumpy is fierce, magnetic, irresistible even. But even this actor can only do so much. As a result of these abuses, some critics now deliberately avoid colorful language in their reviews. In 2010, the pop culture magazine Vanity Fair reported that it had been the victim of reckless blurbing after the television show Lost had taken a review fragment of the most confusing, asinine, ridiculous, yet somehow addictively awesome, television show of all time and only quoted the most addictively awesome television show of all time in its promotional material. Carl B. Arlick recorded an instance of an adverb being applied to a different verb in a 2007 advert for Live Free or Die Hard, where a New York Daily News quote of hysterically overproduced and surprisingly entertaining was reduced to hysterically entertaining. In the United States, there is no specific law against misleading movie blurbs, beyond existing regulation over false advertising. Lumpa reviews advertisements for tone and content rather than the accuracy of their citations. Some studios seek approval from the original critic before running a condensed quotation. The European Union's Unfair Commercial Practices Directive prohibits contextomy, and targets companies who falsely claim accreditation for their products in ways that are not being true to the terms of the endorsement. It is enforced in the United Kingdom by the Office of Fair Trading, and carries a maximum penalty of a £5,000 fine or two years imprisonment. Creation Evolution Controversy 
Scientists and their supporters used the term quote mining as early as the mid-1990s in newsgroup posts to describe quoting practices of certain creationists. The term is used by members of the scientific community to describe a method employed by creationists to support their arguments, though it can be and often is used outside of the creation evolution controversy. Complaints about the practice predate known use of the term, Theodosius Dobzhensky wrote in his famous 1973 essay Nothing in Biology Makes Sense Except in the Light of Evolution. This has been compared to the Christian theological method of proof texting. The Institute for Creation Research ICR, described the use of an evolutionist's quote mistakenly used out of context to negate the entirety of article and creationist claims regarding the lack of transitional forms as a smokescreen. Both answers in Genesis, AIG, and Henry M. Morris, founder of ICR, have been accused of producing books of mind quotes. Talk Origins Archive, TOA, states that entire books of these quotes have been published and lists prominent creationist Henry M. Morris that their words may be used against them and the revised quote book as examples, in addition to a number of online creationist lists of quote minds. Both AIG and ICR use the following quote from Stephen J. Gould on intermediate forms. Context shows that Gould rejected the gradualist's explanation for the lack of support for gradual change in favor of his own interpretation. He continues. Knowing that creationists are quoting him as if he were saying there were no transitional forms, Gould responded. Absurd in the highest degree. Since the mid-1990s, scientists and their supporters have used the term quote mining to describe versions of this practice as used by certain creationists in the creation-evolution controversy. An example found in debates over evolution is an out-of-context quotation of Charles Darwin in his Origin of Species. This sentence, sometimes truncated to the phrase absurd in the highest degree, is often presented as part of an assertion that Darwin himself believed that natural selection could not fully account for the complexity of life. However, Darwin went on to explain that the apparent absurdity of the evolution of an eye is no bar to its occurrence, and elaborates on its evolution. Other out-of-context quotations Besides the creation-evolution controversy, the fallacy of quoting out of context is also used in other areas. In some instances, commentators have used the term quote mining, comparing the practice of others with creationist quote mining.